G'day, I'm Paul. Lexus has just taken the wraps off the new Lexus GX. That's exciting because it's a new Lexus four-wheel drive, but it's also exciting because the Lexus GX is very closely related to the Land Cruiser Prado. And the Land Cruiser Prado here in Australia has been feeling very old and sad. So it is definitely time for a new one and we've been waiting for this information. So today I'm gonna to run you through all of the details that we have. It is all fresh, hot off the press. So some of this is going to develop as we go, but I thought we'd get the video out and have a a little look at some of the pictures. Now, if you haven't done so already, please make sure you subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon as well so you can find out every single time we do one of these sit downs. Let's get started. Okay, so um, I've got my iPad here in front of me. I'm gonna flick through some pictures while we're talking as well. We'll start off with just the, uh, I guess the regular version of the GX. Tell you what, this thing looks sensational. I, I like the look of the 300 series, but this just, I don't know, it just looks really cool. They've done a great job there with the headlights up the front there, and even things like this grill. It isn't over the top like you do find on the LX. It is sort of nice and conservative and still sort of does the job. And I love the profile of this vehicle. It looks significantly bigger than a Prado if you have a look at that wheelbase, and that's because it is. So if I have a look at my notes here, it's basically on the same wheelbase as the LX, and the LX shares a platform with the 300 series. It is uh, 96 millimeters shorter than an LX, so it means those front and rear overhangs are gonna be a little more tucked in. It sits on the TNGAF platform, so that is the platform that uh, the Land Cruiser and subsequently the LX uses. So they really are looking to consolidate a lot of this off-road equipment into these platforms so they can get a lot of bang for buck. Traditionally in the US, the GX has been available with a naturally aspirated petrol engine. This time around, they're going to a turbocharged petrol V6. So 3.4 litre uh, twin turbocharged petrol V6, 260 kilowatts of power, 650 newton metres of torque and that is also made it to that 10 speed automatic transmission. Um, let's have a little look here at some of the other pictures uh, of the rear of this. Love what they've done there with the tail lights as well. So that extends all the way along the back of the vehicle there. Big Lexus uh, lettering up the top there as well and then the GX badge down the side there. Looks really cool because this uh, whole rear section opens up. Check out those wheel arches. They are nicely flared as well so it gives you just this very cool looking stance out on the road with some stealth black up the top there. Have a look at these wing mirrors as well. So they're sort of like a square look. So again, just breaking away from that uh, sort of soft edged appearance, this really has a Tonka truck appearance out on the road there, which I like. What I really like though is this right here. Have a look at this. This is called the Overtrail. And have you seen that color, Sandy Torp? last seen on the 70 series Land Cruiser. So I love the fact that they've integrated it here on a Lexus. Headlights there with LED daytime running light and then full LED lights in there as well. Little headlight washer there too. This is something we're seeing disappearing from these big off-roaders, but if you do get mud splashing up on those headlights, you really wanna be able to clean it off with that high pressure jet. Again, sort of uh, black grill there without too much chrome. These wheels look cool, so it's sitting on 33s. Uh, I can't quite tell what brand of tyre that is, but it kind of looks like a, a BF Goodrich KO2 from a distance. Rock sliders on the side there. This looks like it is built to go off-road, and you can imagine when this is eventually launched as a Prado, and we think the Prado is going to be significantly bigger and probably sit on this same wheelbase and this platform as well. You're gonna have a really good option there to trick this thing up so it is ready for off-road driving. And look, if I was Ford at the moment, I'd be pretty worried about this because Toyota has just gone smart with vehicles like the Overtrail here by giving punters a lot of options. You can go down the sedate path or you can go for the hardcore off-road version. Then they've crammed some incredible engines under the bonnet there. So in addition to that petrol V6, they also have a hybrid coming. It is likely to be the, the hybrid that's used in the Lexus RX 500H. And if you do wanna see our review of that, uh, click up here to watch that. Really impressed with that. So it's a 2.4 litre turbocharged petrol engine made into a hybrid system. So that really will give uh, vehicles like the Prado a lot of flexibility when it comes to not only fuel economy, but performance as well. And that is something the Prado has been desperately lacking. After they killed the petrol V6, went down the path of the diesel that shared with the uh, Hilux. Kind of isn't an amazing uh, package there. And you can see in our uh, towing and off-road videos with the Prado, it is desperately in need of a little bit more grunt behind the wheel. Uh, other key thing here as well, 3,500 kilo brake towing capacity. It does vary depending on the, the grade that you go for, but that is a step up from the Prado, which is currently limited to under 3,500 kilos. Have a look inside the cabin. This is probably where this has stepped up to really lift the game for Lexus and eventually Toyota with the Prado. 
big infotainment system there. So it's a 12.3 inch infotainment system. We've tested this one before on other Lexus products and I love the fact that all of these things are built into that screen. So they're all backlit LCD displays and it's all quite easy to use. All of your core functions are down here and then if it is like the other products that actually have physical controls a little further down as well. So you're not only relegated to using the touch screen. In terms of off-road controls, just while I have this screen open, uh, center diff lock, it also uses a Torsen limited slip center differential with the ability to lock. On the Overtrail model, you'll also have the ability to lock the rear diff, so you can see the button for that there, along with low range and high range four-wheel drive. It'll be a full-time four-wheel drive. Uh, crawl control, you also have multi-terrain select. This is uh, stuff that we've seen before on Land Cruiser and also LX as well, so both great features, give you a bit of flexibility there. Wondering what this is, it's like a little cubby hole or something. I think your phone sits on there, but I'm not entirely sure what that, um, what that function does. In terms of the rest of the interior, uh, cameras there for off-roading. It's one of the things we like about the 300 series and the LX. You really have a lot of visibility when it comes to off-roading. You can see clearly what's happening. And then over on the left here, you can see some more of those off-road controls as well. The other interesting thing inside the cabin, in addition to seven seats, it's also going to be offered with captain's chairs. So it means you have a six seat layout, but there is a bit more luxury and comfort there. Given the wheelbase has increased as well, it should also mean that you have more leg room here in the third row. That's somewhere that uh, the Prado has suffered previously. You don't really have a great deal of room. Disappointingly, if you have a look at the cargo shot here, it's not on sliding rails there for the second row. And that was probably the thing that frustrates me the most with the LX and the 300 series, that you can't give yourself uh, more room in the third row by sliding the second row forward. So if they haven't afforded enough space in here for the third row, it is probably still going to be a little bit cramped. So we'll reserve judgment for when we see that, but um, that is just something I thought I'd point out. And this is what some of the uh, configuration looks like there. So. You can see you've got the, um, the standard layout there, and then if you go to uh, dropping your seats, it sort of uh, moves it up a little bit, but still, look at this, I mean, that is a huge step up there when it comes to loading things. So, I don't know, packaging will be interesting here. Hopefully they sort some of that stuff out before it goes uh, on sale. Really liking the look of uh, this over trail version though. You can see some underbody protection there too, so pretty excited for that. Little sticky beak under the bonnet there. Looks like there's plenty of room for a turbo V6 and plenty of room for hybrid and all that sort of stuff. Uh, just slightly off topic, it actually surprises me how much room they have here in these crash structures in modern cars. You can really sort of go to town on that and uh, potentially even drop a big old V8 in there if you want to. Um, okay, so that is your first look at the new Lexus GX. I'm excited for this because it really does signal where we're gonna be heading with the Prado. Look, we don't know specifically that the Prado is gonna be shared with this, but we know that traditionally the GX and the Prado have been virtually the same vehicle, just with different powertrains. So the fact that they've gone to, uh, to town here offering a 3.5 litre twin turbo petrol V6 means they can probably easily fit the uh, diesel V6 out of the Land Cruiser 300 series in Prado as well. I'll tell you what, if you're Mitsubishi at the moment, um, Isuzu with the MUX, Ford, even with the Everest, you are going to be a little bit concerned that Toyota has this arsenal of stuff coming for Prado, and I'm genuinely excited to drive it because Prado at the moment is still a fairly capable vehicle, but moving to things like E-Pass for the steering, adaptive damping, uh, electronic rear diff lock, even uh, EKDSS as well, I think is really going to be an exciting prospect if you are in the market for something like a Prado, especially at the current price tag of like $100,000. So uh, let me know what you think about the new Lexus GX and subsequently what we think the Prado will be in the comments section below. Are you as excited as I am for it? I'm very keen for your feedback. So let me know down there in the comments section. What would you like to see out of the new Prado as well? Are you a fuss by plug-in hybrids and the hybrid tech or do you just want a big old V6 diesel? Let me know what you think. Now we have actually shot a stack of uh, videos with four-wheel drive SUVs. We're doing drag race, off-roading, a little bit of towing as well. So make sure you subscribe to be notified when all of that goes live. If you haven't done so already, subscribe to our channel, press the bell icon. And if you did enjoy this video, like it and share it with your mates. But until next time, take it easy.